Hello, this is Skyler. This is my first episode on my robot series. Uh, I programmed the NXT using a C-like language. So let's get started. Um, first of all, music and my, my friend Discord. Um, that's not his real name, but that's his title. And uh, yeah, check out his stuff. It's really great. All right, so Robot C. Um, hopefully you know what the NXT is. Um, I'll bring it up and show you all what it is. Um, here we go. So yeah, NXT. It says NXT right there. So, yeah, hopefully it's familiar. Um, and you can hit the orange button once you put batteries in it, and it'll turn on. And the first step uh, is downloading some firmware. So um, we'll go ahead and do that. So you go to Robot and download firmware. Um, you will want to have this plugged into USB um, and just plug it in and refresh the list and it'll be there. And hit F slash W download or, and uh, select the stuff. And um, it'll close connections and wait for the brick to get ready to do stuff. Um, and yeah, it'll, it'll take a little bit. Um, as you can see right here uh, in Windows 7, the um, It'll automatically download the drivers because apparently it needs. Um, oh, see, look at that! It needs different drivers. The NXT does for um, for boot mode, and so uh, we got it's right here. It will search for the Windows uh, through the Windows update, and it will find it. Um, you just gotta wait a little bit, and so I'll just talk or listen to the music, or whatever. But yeah, Windows 7, you can do that. You can also visit the Robot C download page, and I think the drivers are there as well. And so that'll just keep on doing whatever. But we want this to work a bit. Okay, then I'll switch switch to searching pre-configured driver folders, and then it's ready to go. Go back to here, and uh, refresh the list. Hit F. Do that again, just like here. and. Um, It'll start the firmware download, and there we go. It's uh, it fixed it, and it'll say yeah, whatever. Um, that's irrelevant. Okay, so we close. Good job. Firmware's been downloaded. I'll go ahead and start a new project or just a new file, and task main. That is the most important thing to remember. Um, it is magical keywords for programming. This is where all of your, the main body of your program is going to go. If you're telling motors to move or stuff to get displayed to the screen, it's going to happen in task main. Or at least you're going to be telling other sections of code which have that part, you're going to be calling functions here. And you can't really call functions anywhere else but task main. I mean, you can call functions from functions, but we don't have to worry about that. So, first things first. <clears throat> Let's display hello world to the screen because that's traditional. Go NXT display. Um, sometimes it pops up. NXT display string. Now the first thing, um, normally, it's like um, it will pop up a box and say, "Hey, what do you want?" And but it doesn't do that because you have to save the program first. So I'm gonna go and save as um, just um, code one. And once that happens, then if you hit F7 or go to Robot Compile Program, it'll compile program and it says, hey, error. And this turns blue. And that's very important because if this is, if this is not blue, then, um, then Robot C doesn't recognize it and is one of its own functions. Because this right here, we're, not, we're, we're calling this code. We're saying, hey, NXT, do some other code that you already know about. And um, you see down here in the errors window, it says error. Procedure call parameters don't match declaration for uh, NXT display string, constant short, and line number, constant string, and we're saying format, blah, blah, blah. This is saying is, hey, inside these parentheses, you need to give some information. And so the first thing is line number. And um, zero is the first line number. And that's just how it is. Um, and it's 0 through 7. There's 8 lines you can display on. And then it wants a message. So we're going to type hello world. Okay, coolness. So, for this program, if I were to download it right now, 
it would just display hello world and then it'd be done. That's all it has to do. So I'm going to add another function, wait one msec, and that is a function, another function, and you can see it pops, it's up, it's blue, and that's because it says, hey, ro robot C says, hey, I recognize what this is. And this basically means wait for, wait for a millisecond, and we'll do that however many times you put in here. So 3,000 milliseconds would be one second, would be three seconds. And so um, I'll hit F7 again, and it says error goes away, or er, um, procedure call, blah, blah, blah. Um, ah, here we go. That should be a lowercase n. Case matters in this a lot. <clears throat> And their convention is um, what's called camel, uh, camelback. Where um, anyway, that's that's technicalities. So um, error goes away, which means I can download the code now. You can't download code that has errors in it, otherwise you know, things won't run. You get blue screen. Well, if you would anyway. So uh, you can either go to compile and download program, or you can just hit hit F5. This box will come up, and you can either start the program using this button, or um, you can find the <clears throat> file in the file system. So, software files and code one, that's the name of my program, and I'll run it. Hello world. And then it's done. So yeah, congratulations, you made your first program. But um, let's let's have do a few more things. So, um, variable declaration. We'll do that. Variable declaration. If I want to allocate memory in the in, in the NXT to hold a value, I can do the variable variable type plus variable name plus value. Okay. So a variable type like um, int is short for integer, and so that's that is a variable type. And um, you always want to space it out. Um, then we'll, we'll give it a name, so we'll say um, wealth. And then we give it a value. And for value, you always have to have equals and then a number or uh, a literal. And a literal is basically like 56 is a literal. But another variable, like if I had um, um, int bulls equals 5. Whoop. If I had this whole line, and I had before that, bulls is not a literal, um, and um, that's a literal is like an actual value. Bulls is not a literal because it's its own variable. But so I could do int right int bulls equals five int wealth equals bulls. So what this means is that when the NXT starts the program. First thing it does is it says, "Okay, there's going to be an integer that I have to keep track of, and it's going to be na it's going to be called bulls, and its initial value is going to be five, and then it reads the next line. It says, "Okay, there's going to be this other integer that I have to keep track of, and it's going to be called wealth, and it's going to equal bulls, which means that it's going to equal five because bulls is five, and so wealth is bulls, which means wealth is five. Now, there's no linkage, there's no further linkage between these two variables. Like, I could do something else with bulls, and wealth would still be 5 until I set wealth to something else. But, um, yeah. So, if I want to look at bulls, I could say nxt display string, and I'll pick the next line, because I don't want to display over something else, and I will say wealth equals and in here, I'm going to add this thing that's percent %d. And percent %d, that right there, that sequence, is interpreted by the NXT as display a variable that come, that I'm going to give you that comes afterwards. So if I put wealth, this says, hey, display the next variable you have as a whole number. That's what the D part. Percent whatever, that means display a variable that I'm going to give you as something, and D specifically means a positive or negative whole number. And so we'll display wealth. And so what should happen is, is it should say wealth equals 5. 
And so we'll download the program, hit F5, or go to the robot menu, start the program, bring this up, it says wealth equals 5. And that is done. And I can run it again in here. Wealth equals 5. And um, so, yeah, that's that part. If we want to, um, I'm going to go ahead and start up Chrome. And I'm going to type in um, ASCIItable.com because it's going to help us. ASCIItable.com. It shows the... It's in, the, in computers, there is this code called ASCII, which stands for American um, Standard Code for Information Interchange. And basically, um, in binary, you know, all these, all these letters and characters, they're stored as numbers. And it shows you what these numbers are. So... Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. I'll use the plus sign, okay? So the plus sign is the same as decimal 43. So I'm going to declare another int. Int symbol equals 43. Now, if I want to display, I could display... Whoop. I didn't mean that. I meant this. Okay. I'm going to pick, I'm going to display symbol as, instead of a number, I'm going to display as a character. So nxt display string will do line uh, 2 now, and we will say symbol equals, and instead of doing percent %d, I'm going to do percent %c, and percent %c means display the next variable as a character, as like a little letter or symbol, display as a character. And so it's going to interpret 43 instead of displaying the numbers 43. It's going to display um, a little a character. So F5, and um, we'll run the program, and symbol equals plus. Now um, there are other ones like you could do percent %f uh, or percent %i. Percent %i is the same as percent %d, and I don't know why they do that. Um, there are other ones, but percent %d and percent %c are the um, the most important, I think. And so, yeah, that's that part. Um, let's see. That is all I have to say. That's um, that is the main stuff. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.